The following podcast is a Dear Media production. You know those things you are too embarrassed to talk about when it comes to dating? Like when to say I love you, how to define the relationship. Well, We Met at Acme touches upon all of those subjects and more, and we get right into it with our guests and talk about their dating lives and also what not to do when it comes to dating because we're all kind of confused together. So you can tune in every Sunday to We Met at Acme and maybe you can learn a thing or two while I learn a thing or two. Welcome to Press Send. I'm Shanae Alexander, and this is the podcast where we talk through all of your burning questions and attempt to give you our best advice. But today I'm here all alone. Well, Dingo's here. He's here. And that's my only guest for today. He's going to be pretty quiet. So it's mostly going to just be me. I'm so happy. Sometimes I just like to sit down and chat. You know, it's just like you and me, like we're the OGs of this podcast. We're the only ones that are always around you and me. So I figured we'd just kind of catch up for a bit and then also answer some questions. Um, So I thought I'd give you a little life update. Uh, I am fully vaxxed. So happy. We didn't have any side effects from the vaccine. We got, we're Pfizer gang. Also, we were, we went to a comedy show the other night and it's so funny. Socially distanced, of course. We have to say that because, you know, it's that sort of time. But yeah, it was funny. This comedian was bringing up and she was saying how everyone after you say you get vaccinated, how they ask you which one you got as if people have an opinion about that. So we're Pfizer gang. Yeah, we had no side effects from the vaccine. I feel very happy. Honestly, I feel like uh, obviously there was a good year, year and three months there that was feeling pretty dark, but I'm actually feeling really positive right now. I don't know if you guys feel that way too. I know different places have different kind of like speeds at which they're doing this, but I just feel like with spring coming and vaccinations coming and the world opening up a tiny bit here in New York, I feel, I feel like positive for the first time in a really long time. So I'm in a good headspace. Craig and I are really good. Therapy is going really good, which probably, you know, has something to do with the whole everything being better. I've also now been on medication for a while. I feel like I've hit a great point. Stop taking birth control a while ago. And I feel like that's helping me a lot. And I I have no opinions on birth control. I was on birth control for a really long time, hormonal birth control. And, you know, I was just like, I need a break. And I, I, I loved being on birth control. Who doesn't love like a trickle two day period? Now I am um, discharging like a motherfucker. I am running like a flood for five days straight. Trickle for two at the end of that. We all know what that's like, unless you're one of my sh- male listeners, which I'm really sorry about this last 30 seconds. But yeah, I just I feel like. I'm getting myself in balance here. I've also, let's just say we took about six months off from like exercising pretty much. And we're back in a routine. I don't know if you guys know what Craig does, but he works at a studio. And so there are a few nights a week that he works late, sometimes like four or five nights a week. So one thing that's been really cool for us is having our mornings together. And it's been like, Obviously, we get our days started a little later because we spend time in the mornings, but we like drink coffee and then we have been going to the gym. And I've just like having a little schedule in the morning has helped me so much. And if you're anything like me, the pandemic was is is and was so bad because I felt like all of my schedules and like routines were gone. It was just like the same fucking day every day, but it just sucked. And I'm feeling like I'm like, okay, I'm getting back in a rhythm. It's so important, like big Virgo energy. I need that routine. So that's been really nice in the mornings to just like work out. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here recording 
putting off the fact that I'm about to go work out. So I don't know what that also says about me, but definitely has felt really good. And like just a relief to know that maybe this summer things will be a little bit more normal. Work is really great. Work has picked up. I don't, I I talked a little bit about this in the social media episode, but there was like a good five months that um, I didn't do much work. And obviously I was still quote unquote working because I was producing content every day. I was still writing every day, still doing my job, but I just wasn't getting paid for it. And that sucks. So yeah, back on track with work. Um, have been getting to see some friends. Most of my friends are vaccinated now. And so it just, you know, I, I really hope that, I hope this summer just is a breath of fresh air. I'm actually really scared for this summer because I feel like people are going to be just like titties out all summer. Not me personally, just like the world. The world is going to go through a titties out summer, at least in America. And I am a little bit uh, clenching my butthole for that because I feel like there's just going to be, there's just going to be some wild stories. I also feel like there's going to be a lot of unplanned pregnancies. There was like COVID pregnancies but this summer, there's just going to be a lot of unplanned pregnancies. It, it's going to be wild. I uh, hopefully not one of my own. You know, I still am having the inkling that I want to redo my whole house. I don't know if uh, you guys have felt this way, but for me, this year has been all about like changing things in my house. And I just I want to just throw everything away and start over. That's not budgetarily. Is that a word? Budgetarily smart, but it is something that I want to do. So I might be doing that. I'll keep you posted. And then we have some really fun guests coming up on the podcast and also some cool series on the podcast that I want to start doing. I would love you guys to leave a review, not just because it helps boost like the pot, the show and the podcast as a whole, but it does. But also I would love to hear what you'd want to see on the podcast. The reviews are a really good concentrated place. If you want to see more episodes on wellness or on, you know, buying your first house or advice on finances or sex, another sex episode with Dr. Holly, let me know in the reviews because it really helps us kind of shape what the show is going to become. But yeah, everything seems to be rolling in the right direction. I I mean, I just want to really take a trip. Um, we're still holding off on that, obviously, to be safe and because most places aren't accepting um, Americans. <laughs> I mean, not. truthfully, I wouldn't either. But I really I want to go somewhere. And if you have suggestions on where we should go when things open up, please send me a DM on Instagram because I am I am like really meditating on those travel plans. So let's get into some questions here. I have one. All right. This is from an anonymous listener. For the past couple months, I've been dating this guy safely, lots of hikes and picnics at first until we merged bubbles. We both live alone and he's vaccinated. It was so exciting because I've literally not gone on a second date in over five years. Says my town is a dry dating market to an insane degree. This guy has so many shared values with me. Our first day of messaging, he casually dropped. Just FYI, I voted early for Biden today, just so you know where I stand, which made me have absolute hard eyes. Some stances on religion, future goals, pandemic safety, etc. Similar interests, get along great, laugh a lot. But then this last weekend, I found out a few things from his past that totally threw me. I knew he partied hard in college and dropped, dropped out, and then got his shit together, joined the military, and doesn't drink anymore. I had no issue with that because it's 13 plus years ago, and he's clearly matured from when he was 20. Then we were chatting one night, and I realized I had assumed some things. He actually is a is a full-on alcoholic, and he only got sober three years ago, which in the scheme of sobriety is very fresh, especially versus the 13-plus years I had assumed. It hadn't come up before because, A, COVID dates are basically outward bound, and I personally don't drink very often because it doesn't make me feel great, and I'd rather have a cookie than a beer. So then it just threw me. I have so many people in my friend circle and whose lives have been utterly destroyed by relatives and loved ones with addictions. And so part of me has 0% confidence that anyone with substance abuse problem will ever live a life without relapse. And I'm 100% certain I don't want to live a life defined by someone's addictions, relapse cycles. But then the other part of me is like, are you really going to throw out the most optimistic, positive match you've encountered in years over a past that you've never observed? What if this never impacts your future and is just part of his history? But is that dangerously naive? 
Would I be having this internal battle if it hadn't been so long since I'd had a relationship that I was actually excited about? Bottom line, really, where is the line and what's reasonable baggage you encounter dating in your mid-30s versus true deal breakers? When is someone's past a red flag that you should heed and when is it just their past? I love this question for a lot of reasons because it's not just it's not just about dealing with serious problems like addiction and things like that. Like I think people's past trauma is a really huge thing to consider when you're dating and I always have a rule of thumb and I have this rule of thumb if someone cheats as well. The advice I give because I have a lot of people ask me, you know, if my boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever cheats on me, you know, should I stay with them? And the advice I commonly give to people that ask that question is, can you actually forgive them and move past it and not hold it against them? Or is this something that you're going to hold against them for the rest of your relationship? Me personally, and neither one is, first of all, neither one is a bad answer. But for me, I know that if someone cheated on me, I couldn't get past it. I would always have trust issues with them just because of my own personal trauma from my past. I would always be worried. It would cause me a lot of anxiety, and I don't think I could get past it. Hopefully, knock on wood, I never have to be in that situation in my future. But I always say, you know, personally, I could never get past it. So that would be something that I would not be able to engage in in a relationship moving forward. However, if you can get past it and there is true, obviously, like there has to be commitment from the person who cheated that they will do everything in their power and seek help and seek support on these issues and also create, obviously, like really clear boundaries of how you can trust them. But I would say the same is pretty true on other red flags, like things like addiction or things like, I don't know, if they have gambling issues or they have lied a bunch in their past. I think it's about having a really frank discussion about number one, like saying your fear about it. And to this listener, I would say, I think you should say, hey, this really uh, makes me afraid. And this is why it's not because I have a judgment, but it's because because of my past experience. I have experienced people that have struggled with addiction and relapse, and that really scares me. And I think, first of all, acknowledging how you feel about it, that you don't have to kind of like battle this internal monologue on your own. You can actually share that with your partner. And I think giving that person the space to talk about ways they have kind of reclaimed their life and existence and how they have a, you know, if if he's like, I just, you know, I just don't think I'll ever drink again. That's not a good enough plan. But if someone is in recovery, if someone is going to meetings, if someone is head on dealing with their issues, I think that shows progress. And to me, that red flag can actually turn into a green flag in how they are responding to the problem, how they are responding to their past, I think is a huge thing. So let's say you get in a relationship with someone and they said they've cheated on their partner before. For me, that's extremely triggering. For me, that's something that is really a scary thing to enter and to trust them again, even though it didn't happen to me. Like this listener is saying, like, she's never experienced him while he is like in the midst of addiction. But, you know, for a lot of us, that thing can be really triggering, especially if you've had experiences with that before. So for me, if I had a partner who said, oh, I've I've cheated in the past or I've had problems with alcohol in the past, et cetera, et cetera, asking how they're dealing with it. And the way this can become a green flag is actually when you see how someone deals with their problems and issues head on versus ignoring, um, assuming that they, it won't happen again. It's a new phase in their life. It's a new relationship. It's whatever. I think if, if they can really clearly explain a roadmap to how they're preventing this thing from happening again, that actually can be a real kind of like indicator of how they handle problems in their life. And it actually can be a really good indicator on how they might, you know, handle problems in your own relationship. But I will go back and and say that if this is going to be something that is going to make you worried all the time, give you anxiety, 
if every time they go out with their friends, you're going to have to be sitting at home worried that they're going to fall back into drinking or relapse. I think it's kind of like the cheating example of, can I get past this and can I trust this person fully and live in their now versus in their past? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And I don't think it's a one size fits all answer for anybody. For me personally, it would totally depend on the person and, and like I said, how they handled the issues that they have dealt with in the past. I agree with you. It is really hard not to relapse when you struggle with addiction, but it can be done. And I think with the right support systems in place, whether that's, I mean, I would say not whether that's, but an outside support system and a partner who supports them, I think it absolutely can be done. And so it's all about asking yourself, am I letting this person stay in my life because I just want someone in my life? Or do I actually think that this person has given me reason to believe that they can help themselves and that they can maturely kind of like go through any obstacles in their life having to do with addiction or whatever their past trauma is? And I think also whenever you said he was in the military, I know a lot of people that have served have dealt with addiction problems when they get back. And so I think also understanding the why is important just to develop empathy and compassion for this person and that you might be able to talk to them more about like what triggers them, what has triggered them in the past, how can I support you in that? But I do think voicing your your fear about it is an important part of it because you don't have to hang on to that by them by yourself. I also feel like you're pretty early on. And so I think sussing it out, feeling it out, because who knows? He could be like, you know, he could eat a salad weird in like three months and you could decide like that actually is the deal breaker. I don't think this is something that you need to worry about right now unless he's exhibiting signs that he is unstable or he's a danger to himself or to you at this point. I think feeling it out and seeing kind of how he deals with these obstacles in his life going forward and then talking about like how he's dealt with it in the past and how he stayed sober. I think that's super important. And I don't think it's as black and white as stop seeing him or see him. I think it's more about the person and the individual. And we can't kind of blanket statement people, you know, I think you have to be a little bit more patient and a little bit have a little more gray area and not be so black and white. I hope that helps. And please let me know how it goes. But you know, there's a lot of reasons not to date someone. And I think you might find one of the other ones first. Let me tell you that. But, you know, I think acknowledging that you are coming from a place of loneliness, I think that's really important. And I think constantly checking in with ourselves, whether it's dating someone with addiction, um, a past and addiction, or dating someone that, you know, has a, a tough family situation dating someone that has dealt with anger issues or someone that's not communicative. I think it's really important to go inward and say, is this something that I would be signing up for even if I wasn't lonely? My therapist, um, obviously on a much smaller level, she, she talks to me a lot about this when I talk to her about, you know, things that Craig disagree, Craig and I disagree on or arguments that we've had she asked the question simply, and this has really helped me. If nothing changed, would you still want to be with this person? If nothing changed from today, if he never shifted his viewpoint, if he never shifted his thought, if the behavior didn't change, would you still want to be in this relationship? And I think that always is a question that really grounds me. And I hope, you know, all of us who are in relationships, seeking relationships, can ask ourselves that question. Is this a place that I would want to be in if nothing shifted? And my answer has always been yes. And so I think that's a really good, a really good barometer for where you're at in a relationship. Because if the answer is, well, no, but I think he can change or I think she can change. I don't think that's a good enough answer because the thing is, is then, and this is all therapy, let me tell you, the thing is, is you're buying into the expectation of the person rather than the person. And so that's not really realistic. And then what expectation breeds is you start 
feeling resentful. You know, not having your expectations met over and over and over creates resent. It creates anger. It creates anxiety. So we always kind of talk about in therapy, like someone meeting your needs above and beyond, that's cherry on the top stuff. That's, you know, that's that's the extra. Someone improving or changing themselves or, you know, kind of changing their viewpoints, that's extra. So can you deal with the now? Can you, would you choose the now versus what they could be? Because we aren't dating people's potential. We are dating people. If you're not using ZocDoc, I don't know what to say because I've been using them now for years. I was using it back in the days where they didn't even have an app. I was full browser babe on ZocDoc looking for doctors because I don't trust anyone. I don't trust anyone. I need to read at least 12 reviews. I need to know if I'm about to show up at a scam artist place. And you know what? Let me tell you. One time I didn't use ZocDoc. I went and this guy, I literally went to someone's basement, a basement at like a home. And it was the creepiest thing. He had stacks of papers all over his desk. It looked like an episode of The Hoarders. And that is what happens when you don't use ZocDoc to look up your doctor's You can look up by area. It's super easy. You can book appointments there and they can tell you if they take your insurance, which we've all been to a doctor where you show up, you're about to pay and they're like, that'll be $9 million. And you're like, I have insurance. And they're like, not here. You don't just download the free ZocDoc app. The easiest way to find a great doctor and instantly book an appointment. With ZocDoc, you can search for local doctors who take your insurance, read verified patient reviews, which I love. I need to know, is this person legit? Are they nice? Do they have a good bedside manner? Do they have weird breath? I need to know. And you can find out all those things on ZocDoc. And you can book an appointment right there. You can do in-person. You can do video chats. And you never wait on hold with a receptionist again, which (laughs) I'd rather not talk to anybody ever. Whether you need to see a primary care physician, dentist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, eye doctor, or other specialist, ZocDoc has you covered. Let me tell you, I recently used ZocDoc to find a podiatrist. They shot my foot up with steroids. It was a great experience, and he's a nice guy. I use ZocDoc, and so should you. ZocDoc makes healthcare super easy. Now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash press send and download the ZocDoc app to sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor. Many are available as soon as today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash press send. Again, that's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash press send. All right, next question here. Ooh, let's pick a good one. Oh, gosh. This one. Okay. This is amazing. Okay. Hey, Shanae, my best friend since basically forever is in a relationship with this guy who is fine. Nothing glaringly wrong, but I have a gut feeling he's not her person. They bicker a lot and she spends a lot of time talking about if they're right for each other. I don't want to be pushy and tell her what to do, but I feel like there are better guys out there for her. They always end up having long, hard talks and she gets convinced that he's definitely her person for about a week. And then the cycle starts over again. I don't think he's a bad person, but he may not be her person. Another layer to it, she sometimes talks as if I don't understand because my relationship is, quote unquote, perfect and easy. Don't get me wrong. I feel so lucky because I'm in a relationship that does feel so right for me. However, I've been in a lot of other relationships that remind me a lot of hers. All the back and forth and sweet talking. I try hard not to bring my biases in and act like I know what it's like because everyone's situation is different, but there is a layer of her making me feel a little bit guilty about my perfect relationship. Bottom line, how do I support my friends in making her own decisions when I have strong opinions and biases myself? I just really want her to be happy in the long term and not staying in this relationship because it's comfortable and familiar. I cannot stress this enough. Stay out of it. And I know that some of you are probably shocked to hear me say that, but the only thing that you telling your friend that her relationship sucks will do is make your relationship bad. You need to create a safe place where she can come and talk about her relationship. And if she asks for feedback on it, you can give it. A huge thing that has been helpful for me 
and something that I've been doing in my relationships is asking people if they want my opinion. And it has helped me tremendously because some people will say, no, I just actually just want someone to listen to me. But what you're doing is you're creating stress between your relationship and not her relationship with her boyfriend. If anything, you're creating more of a rift between you than them. So what is important in these situations when she's talking and bitching about her boyfriend and saying he's a fucking asshole or whatever she says about him is say, well, tell me more about that. Like, how does that make you feel? You're allowed to ask her questions about how it makes her feel. But let me get this really straight. No one changes their mind based on someone else's opinion. They have to realize it themselves. She has to come to the realization that this is not the right relationship for her. And some people can say, like, I can see all the red flags. I got to get out. Some people cannot. They have to get dinged up in the process. And I do not mean actually physically. I do mean emotionally dinged up in the process. Obviously, if there's something like abuse happening or something that your friend is in danger, of course, step in. Of course, that's a different scenario. But we're talking about they just have a boring fucking relationship that they bicker. That may not be your ideal relationship, but it might be something that's fine for her right now. And you know what? The thing is, is it's not going to be fine for her forever. And she's going to learn and she's going to get out of it eventually. And maybe she won't. Maybe she'll have to marry that person and get a divorce. But that's not your business. Your business is to be a good friend. Your business is to support her and be there for her. It doesn't mean that you have to support every decision she makes. It doesn't mean that you have to support her relationship, but you have to be there for her. And I had to learn this the hard way. I had to have some friends tell me, hey, I didn't really like telling you things were going on in my life because you tended to like insert your opinion. So now what I've learned is to say, hey, do you want my opinion or would you rather me just listen? Or I, I, I have some thoughts on this, but I totally respect if you're not really wanting to hear that and you just want me to be here for you. I think you have to first ask if they have the capacity to receive advice, if they want advice from you. Yes, I'm saying this as a person who has a podcast on advice, (laughs) but I think you have to, you have to open that door first and allow them to shut it without getting your feelings hurt. If you say, hey, can I give you some advice on this based on an experience I had? And she says, "Uh, I mean, you have to be like, okay, no problem. I'm here for you because the most important thing is that when they break up, when she's really having a problem, when she's seriously contemplating a breakup, not when she's just hot and cold on him every other week, but when she really needs someone, she is going to feel like you are the safe space that she can come and get support. And the thing is, is if you constantly are kind of belittling belittling their relationship or trying to insert yourself in their relationship, she's never going to feel safe And she might even prolong the relationship because she doesn't want a chorus of people telling her, I told you so. And I'm serious about this. You have to just support her as a human being. And the thing is, is one way you can do that is talk about all the other great things in her life and your lives. Talk about something other than your relationships. If And I used to have a friend that would constantly bring up the same shit about her boyfriend. It was every time we talked, it was like, oh, we're fighting about this thing again. We're fighting about this thing again. And you can, you can say, you can have boundaries and say, hey, I feel like every time we get together, we talk about this. And as much as I want to support you, I really want to talk about other things that we have got, we've got going on in our life. And that includes you not talking about your perfect relationship all the time. We as women specifically need to learn to talk about stuff other than our relationships because our relationships do not define us. Our partners do not define us. We have a lot of other shit going on. And I find that a lot of times we we fall into talking about relationships, but we could be talking about our passions. We could be talking about work. We could be talking about other things that make us happy, our hobbies, what we've been thinking about lately, things that interest us. Oh, I've really gotten into learning about X, Y, and Z. Like, what do you think about that? I think we need to have better conversations with our friends. Step one. Step two, ask her if you can give her advice before giving it. Number three, your job as a friend is to support your friend. You don't have to support 
her boyfriend. You don't have to support their relationship, but you have to support your friend. And what your friend needs is a safe, trusting space to come to with their shit. And if you don't want to hear it again, you can redirect the conversation and you can also ask her questions. Well, what do you really like about him? I hear you. I hear you saying a lot of the stuff that bothers you, but what do you really enjoy about your relationship? And guess what? If she can't say anything that she really enjoys, that might click the light bulb in her head to be like, oh, actually, I don't really enjoy this relationship. I don't really enjoy this person. But that's not for you to imply. You can ask her leading questions. You don't have to tell her the answer. She's going to tell you the answer, and then she can go off and reflect on her own answers. I'm telling you, things rarely ever change before people want them to change. She may not be ready to start over. She may not be ready to be single. She may not be ready to start over. And for some people, that takes time. And I, I, I love that your energy in this friendship is care. That was always my energy too. I always wanted the best for my friend. But sometimes the best thing for your friend that you can do for them is support. The best thing you can do is unconditional love. The best thing you can do is creating a safe space. And that can go for like, I mean, there are people in my life who I see making the same mistakes over and over. It can go for people that you feel like are living a really unhealthy lifestyle. I see this all the time on the internet. People are quote unquote living a lifestyle that people don't agree with, whether that's what they eat, how much they work out, what they look like, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think anyone ever felt motivated by someone else telling them they were doing something wrong or that they were doing something they didn't like? No. It comes through empowerment and support and also acceptance that that person doesn't want to shift anything about their life, that they are still loved, valid, and cared for by you. That is how change happens is when people feel empowered in themselves. If every time this person comes to you, you're like, why are you doing this to yourself? You're in a bad relationship. You're not sticking up for yourself. All you're telling this person is that they're not doing a good job. They're not standing up for themselves. They deserve better. They're at a deficit. That is not motivating. If anything, that would make me not want to fucking hang out with you. And I'm saying this as a person who has done this. So as much as it probably isn't fun to hear me say, like, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I'm not a singer, but let it go. Love your friend. Ask good questions. Talk about other shit. Make her feel excited about her life. Be excited about your life outside of your perfect relationship or her shitty one. I feel like we want to help people, but often the way we help people is by force. And I think the best thing we can do is help by creating a great foundation of a relationship and a support system and letting them make the choices on their own. Well, I think that's all, all we have time for today. I, uh, I'm feeling really riled up. I have a lot of um, past anxiety about how I used to be with people in my life, similar to this last listener. I think one thing that is really cool is that we all have the opportunity to grow and change. Every day, we can pick something better for ourselves. We can choose to improve how we communicate. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I think these little changes, even, you know, just asking people if, you know, they have capacity for me to chime in on their lives, asking people if they have the space and the emotional energy for me to unload something, to vent a little bit. I think that's like really important and has really shifted my friendships more than anything. I love you all so much. I would love you to, again, leave a review for what you want to see. We have some really fun things. We actually have an HR professional that's coming on. And I know we're all kind of like, a lot of people are going back into the workforce and going to be looking for new jobs. So I have an HR professional. She's actually a friend of mine who has worked at some of the biggest companies in the world. And she is going to give all of her hiring tips and all of her like tips on getting a job and what to expect and all of that. So I'm really, really excited. I definitely want to have 
a couple more finance episodes and sex episodes just because I feel like, let's be honest, we've all hit a little dry spell in quarantine, whether you're partnered or not. Every couple I know has been like, wow, we thought we'd be having more sex in quarantine and we're not. And every single person I know is like, I'm vaxxed and waxed and ready to go. So I think we do need a little Dr. Holly in our life. So if you want to see that, please leave a review and let me know. Or you can send me a DM on Instagram. You can always find me over there at Shanae Alexander. You can follow along on Instagram at Press and Podcasts on Instagram as well. We'd love to hear from you about what you think about the show. And furthermore, let me just lastly say again, you never have to figure it all out alone. All you have to do is just press send.